Are you thinking of selling covered calls on dividend stocks to earn more income? If so, you came to the right place. In this video, I'm going to go through the entire process. Regular investors like you and me sell covered calls every day. Now, this video assumes you already know the basics of selling covered calls to generate weekly or monthly income. Also, in this video, I'll go over when's the best time to sell covered calls, how to make the most money from them, and when to close out the trade. I'll also go over the risks of selling covered calls. Yes, there's always a risk, and it might not be what you think, so stay tuned. Now, if you're new to selling covered calls, I suggest starting with this video I published just a few months ago, as it's more of an introduction, and then you can go ahead and come back to this video later on. Also, in the description, I've left a list of the chapters and their markers. This way, you can skip around this video if you like. Now, if you're new to the channel, my name is Rick Orford, author of The Financially Independent Millennial. And while I'm not a financial advisor or licensed in any way to provide investment advice, I am an active trader that's traded options for nearly 20 years. And the trade ideas in this video are just examples for informational purposes only. They're not a suggestion to buy or sell. Also, if you like videos about investing or making money or even retiring early, Now's a great time to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you'll never miss one of my future videos. Oh, and before I forget, this video is brought to you by SureDividend. SureDividend helps investors find high quality income securities for their retirement and financial freedom portfolio. And the Sure Dividend newsletter analyzes their top 10 high quality dividend growth stocks each and every month. Now, folks, stay tuned, and I'll be giving you a coupon code for a really nice discount. Okay, so now we got that all out of the way, let's dive right in. So you're here because you want to know more about selling covered calls on dividend stocks. Well, as a primer, dividend stocks are shares in companies that pay a dividend. Many companies pay dividends, and the best companies are the ones that are the most established, like the dividend aristocrats and the dividend kings. Generally, dividends are paid out of net profits, but it's more of a best practice than a rule. Also, they're often paid out quarterly, however, some dividend companies also pay monthly, uh, semi-annually, or annually. The dividend amounts are often the same, or greater each and every period. However, when times are tough, the dividend can get cut. The nice thing about selling covered calls on dividend stocks is that no matter what happens to the dividend, you'll still be able to sell the option and collect the premium. A call option is a contract that investors like you and I can buy and sell. For the purposes of this video, we're going to be discussing American-style call options. Investors who sell American call options give the buyer the right, but not the obligation, to buy a specific underlying security, like a dividend stock, from you, the seller, at a specific price at any point until the option expires. Now, there's another type of option called European option, and those give the buyer the option to exercise only on the expiration date. But again, only for this video, we'll be considering American-style options. One thing to know is that to sell covered calls on dividend stocks, or any stocks for that matter, you're going to need a margin account, and you'll also need to be approved for selling options by your broker. Now, these approvals might happen automatically, or you might have to request them. Your broker will also ask if you're looking to sell naked options, and this is where you don't own the underlying security. 
and selling naked options comes with theoretical unlimited risk and will likely be harder to get approval for. However, to sell covered call options, the risk is very low and practically zero to the broker, so getting approved isn't difficult at all. Okay, so let's look at how selling a covered call works with an example of Abbott Labs, a member of the Dividend Aristocrats. Here I'm going to open up nyse.com for help with this. Here we can search for Abbott Labs, and we see it's trading around $118. To find an option, we click on the Options tab. And here we can see some of the call options on the left and put options on the right. The first thing we'll want to do is pick an expiration date. And I'll pick October 29th as it's about a month into the future from today. I find that picking an option a month or more into the future often gives me a better chance to lock in a profit down the road. Stick around and I'll be talking about that more later. So here we can see a list of strike prices. And the bid price is the price someone is currently willing to pay for the option. So let's take a look at this slightly out of the money option, the $126 strike that you can sell for 72 cents or $72 for one contract, less any commissions. The $72 is the option premium or income that you get to keep regardless of what happens to the direction of the stock. If by October 29th, Abbott Labs stock is trading below the strike price of $126, it'll expire worthless and the $72 is yours to keep. But if it's trading over $126 up to any point and including the expiration date, the buyer can and will likely exercise their right to buy the stocks from you at $126 a piece. Now that you know the mechanics of an American style option, the part that makes it covered is the fact that you must own at least 100 shares of the underlying security for each option contract. But the number doesn't have to be round. I mean, in this case with Abbott Labs, if you were to sell two contracts, you'll need to already own at least 200 shares. You can have more, like 210 or 250 or whatever. But to sell two call option contracts, you're going to need 200 shares minimum. This way, if your option gets exercised, these are the 200 shares that will get sold to the call option buyer at the strike price. Of course, as an option seller, your goal is for the stock to trade below the strike price so that your option expires worthless at expiration. This way, you get to keep your shares and the income you made from selling the option. And stay tuned because a little later, I'm going to show you how you can find call options that have an 85% chance or even a 90% chance of expiring worthless. And you can do it week after week, month after month. It's kind of like getting your cake and be able to eat it too. Now, you might be wondering about the dividend. First, if the company pays a dividend, it will already be factored in into the price of the option. Taking Abbott Labs again as an example, if you sell a covered call on it and between now and the option's expiration, a dividend is paid out, the dividend amount will already be factored into the option price when you sell it. So you get to keep the dividend and the call option income. And many investors make two, even three or more times their income by using this strategy. It's called double dipping. And if you like the idea of double dipping your income, go ahead and give me a like on this video, because I know I do. Call options are priced based on their intrinsic value, and that's the difference between the strike price and the price of the underlying security, and the time value, which is the rest of the value. Both time to expiry and volatility influences the time value heavily. 
Putting it differently, investors will make the most money selling call options with longer expiration dates when volatility is high. When volatility is low and the expiration is sooner, well, option premiums will be a lot less. Now, I wouldn't blame you if you were wondering how much can you make selling covered calls. Well, folks, it's not unheard of to get 20, 25 percent on an annualized basis selling covered calls. How much you earn depends on how volatile the stock currently is, the strike price, and the expiration date. In general, when mar markets are calmer, you'll have to sell the calls closer to the money with an expiration date that's further out. However, the more volatile the markets are, the higher the monthly income you'll earn selling covered calls. And many call sellers love it when stocks are volatile because even if it means the risk of getting exercised is higher, volatility means more income. Now, you might be wondering about the risks of selling covered calls. Well, there's three. The first risk is that if the underlying equity rises above the strike price, you'll be forced to sell. Now, if you've owned the stock for a long time, you might have a significant capital gain. And if your option is exercised, well, that gain will be crystallized. Is it a big deal? Well, take our friend Abbott Labs again. Let's say you've owned it for a while, since 2016, when it was trading around $40. Well, if you had to sell your stocks today, you'd have around $7,800 in capital gains to deal with at tax time for each call option contract sold. And depending on your tax rate, this could result in a significant tax burden. Okay, so the second risk is that the stock falls during your covered call trade. If that happens, don't panic. But if the stock falls, just know that you're not going to be able to sell your stock until you first close out your call option. And that's how you mitigate any call option risk. You close out your trade by buying back the exact same option that you initially sold. Your broker might know this as a buy to close order. Either way, when you buy back the option, you're going to have to pay for it. And no matter what, it's going to eat into your profits. In fact, if the stock has risen above the strike price and you want to close out your trade, you might even have to pay more for your option to close out that leg. But wait, it doesn't have to end there. One way to fix the trade and make some more money is to roll the call option. Rolling the call option means first buying back the option you originally sold, if you haven't done so already, and then you can sell another call option with a slightly higher strike price a little further down the road. And it's kind of like kicking the can until the option expires worthless and you get to keep 100% of the income. Third, there's early assignment risk. With American style options, the call buyer can exercise their right to buy the shares from you at any time before expiration. And while it doesn't usually happen, it can happen, for example, if a dividend is called before expiration, or if there's some surprise where the buyer feels it's in their best interest to buy the stocks at the strike price. Again, it's rare, but just know that it's possible. Okay, so the goal of every option seller is to let the option expire worthless. If you're looking for the best chances of having an option expire worthless, I use an option scanner to scan the marketplace for different options. And we can continue using our Abbott Labs as an example. To scan for options, I can open my Option Samurai account and start by cl clicking Compose New Scan. 
Then here, I'll type in the stock, ABT, remove the option volume, remove expiration, remove moneyness, remove return, but I'll keep annualized return, add open interest, and set the probability of expiring worthless to 90%. This means that any call options that come out in the results will have at least a 90% chance of expiring worthless. Now I'll hit run scan to see what I've got. And here you can see the Abbott Labs $124 strike is selling for around 16 cents or $16 per contract expiring October 2nd in just two days. And the annualized return is 13.29% and there's some open interest, meaning there's already people ready to buy this option at this price. Best of all, there's a more than 90% chance the option will expire worthless. Folks, if you think 90% chance of expiring worthless is a good chance, give me a like on this video because I know I do. One thing to note are the earnings dates. Stocks tend to be more volatile leading up to and shortly after their earnings call. And as a result, if your stock rises above the strike price by expiration, well, expect the option to get exercised. For this reason, I prefer an option that expires at least a week or two after an earnings date. To sell a covered call, you'll first need at least 100 shares of the company in your brokerage account for each contract you want to sell. So if you want to sell two contracts at the same time, you're going to need 200 shares of the company. And you can have more than 200, it's just that for two contracts, you're going to need 200 shares. Once you've settled on a specific option using an option scanner, either through your brokerage or another company like Option Samurai, you can instruct your brokerage to sell to open X number of contracts for a specific company. You'll also need to input the expiration date and the strike price. If the brokerage gives you a quote, the bid price is the amount somebody is currently willing to pay. And remember, the total income will be the bid price times 100 times the number of contracts. So if the bid price is 50 cents and you sell three contracts, well, you'll get $150 in covered call income. All right, so one thing you'll wanna be aware of is your trading commissions. Some companies charge upwards of $25 to trade just one option contract. And if your option income is only, say, 40 bucks, then maybe it's not worth it. Now, there's other brokerages that have much cheaper commissions. And some brokerages offer options trading absolutely free. Okay, so if you're a numbers guy like I am, you'll probably want to calculate your returns. So here's how you do it. There's two returns that you're going to want to know. But before I get into the returns, remember that promo code I mentioned earlier for the Sure Dividend newsletter? Well, because you're watching this video, you can go ahead and use my coupon code, FIM41OFF, to lock in savings of $41 a year and get instant access to the newsletter with a seven day free trial. I also went ahead and left you a link in the description below. Check it out because I think you'll love it. Okay, so back to returns. Like I said, there's two that you'll want to know. The first is the total return and the other is the annualized return. The total return is the amount of the income divided by the stock price. That's it. So let's take our Abbott Labs example again. Let's say you got 72 cents for selling the call option and the option expired worthless. Well, your total return is only around 
Now, 0.6% might not sound fun, but what if that was just after a week or a month? If the call option is exactly four weeks out, you can calculate the annualized return, which is the option income times 52 weeks times 100, divided by the stock price times the number of weeks left for the call option expiration. In this case, you would get an annualized return of 7.93%. Now, 7.93% is far more interesting than 0.6%, isn't it? Another thing to consider is the break-even point. The break-even point is simply the price you paid for the stock minus the option premium. Okay, so using the Abbott Labs example again, the stock was trading around $118. And let's say you simultaneously bought the stock and you sold the $126 call option and collected $0.72 cents in option premium. Well, in this case, your break-even break point is $117.30. And this is probably only important if you bought the shares and sold the call option at the same time. Now, you might be wondering all of the different scenarios that might happen at expiration. Well, at expiration, one of three things is going to happen. Number one, the option is in the money, meaning the stock is above the strike price. If this happens, your shares will get sold to the buyer at the strike price, and using the above Abbott Labs example, if you sold two contracts at the $126 strike, well, you're going to sell your shares, but you're also going to get $25,200 deposited in your account. The second thing that could happen is that the option is at the money, meaning the stock is the same price as the strike price. In this case, the option will most likely expire worthless and you get to keep your shares and the option income. The third thing that could happen is that the option is out of the money and this is exactly what everybody wants. The stock price ends below the call option strike price. In this scenario, the option expires worthless and you keep your shares and the option income. So selling covered calls on dividend stocks can be a genius way to double or even triple your income. But guys, don't get too greedy. Stick to high quality stocks like the dividend aristocrats or the dividend kings. And if you're going to sell covered call options, stick with those who have a high prob probability of expiring worthless. This way, you can hopefully repeat the process over and over. By the way, have you ever sold covered calls? What was your experience? Do you have any questions about this video? Well, don't hesitate to let me know in the comments below because I love getting back to you all. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you again in another video. Bye guys.